GCSE Maths 2022 Paper 1 Non-Calculator Harder or Easy? Check it out! Hi everyone! Today we are going to discuss about these four points. First, brief details of the questions came in the Non-Calculator paper today. Number two, number of four, five, six marker questions. Any harder questions came in the paper? And the fourth one is the grade boundaries. So this video is all about the GCSE Maths 2022 paper one review. The topics came in the non-calculator paper one is the inequalities. So linear inequality came. Uh, prime factors, it could be a, a factor tree or it could be a lowest common multiple, that kind of question. So prime factors knowledge. Ratio and proportion is not kind of a direct question, it's a reasoning type question. Standard form, they have asked for um, convert them to an ordinary form and convert them to a, a standard form, that kind of questions. Polygons, interior angles, exterior angles, that kind of quadratic graphs we were told that by the students uh, a table with a couple of empty spaces and you need to fill up the table and draw the graph and some questions on it compound measures it's kind of a density uh, mass and volume type of questions frequency table to find out the mean kind of question surface area um, is a 3d shapes of third surface area Cumulative frequency, just to you have to draw the graph and answer some couple of questions. Uh, a simple probability questions with combination of the ratio and uh, proportions. Recurring decimals into fractions. Area of 2D shapes. It could be sector area, it could be area of a circle, it could be square, it could be rectangle, all the 2D shapes. A speed time graph. So speed time graph may be given so you have to draw something uh, a tangent or something to find out a, a particular question or the area under the curve gives what that kind of questions vectors this time they change the type of the vector question and um, the next one is a tree diagrams came in and direct and inverse proportion it's the same as previous to 2018 or 2019 paper fractions is combined with the powers then the solving equations came and circles and tangents right so how we prepared the unofficial marking scheme is the biggest question everybody asking from our um, youtube channel in the comment section most of the questions people ask for it it is a reliable source -so and can be um, rely on these answers so the answer for uh, those questions is we interviewed and we asked from the students who sat for the exam today and we asked more than 20 students and checked their answers and their questions and their feedback based on their feedback we just find out what sort of questions came in so most of the people are talking about the numbers and standard form those questions and we're trying to see many people say the same number and then we uh, guess the question could be like this most of the people are saying the numbers and the type of questions came in and we imagine the exam paper with 21 questions in this type and after that we predict the answers by ourselves and uh, we just to prepare and publish the marking scheme is unofficial the distribution of the marking scheme based on the methods and working outs will vary compared to the actual marking scheme so but the question type similarly nearly same maybe one or two maximum five questions may be wrong and uh, the numbers may be uh, different but the type of question is like a uh, pretty much same so that's how we find out the questions the next one we are going to be discuss about the uh, type of marks and the number of questions came two markers two questions came three markers seven questions came and four markers seven question came five markers three questions came and six markers two questions came there's no seven markers or more than that 
So pretty much, if you think about two markers and three markers and four markers, it's a kind of a doable questions. Altogether, 16 questions came uh, doable. So in an average, in a paper, if 16 questions is doable out of 21, we will categorize this paper as a kind of a very much a decent paper. It's an okay paper, a doable paper. So no, it is a decent paper from edXL. And five marker and the six marker, it's the six marker is a categorized into a couple of various parts. One is from the cumulative frequency. So the examiner giving six marks for collecting all the sub um, section of the question and the quadratic graph also you need to get some marks for the drawing the graph solving equation so the six markers coming for those two topics however the five marker questions came on three ch chapters uh, vectors sector area and the ratio and proportion so these are the uh, questions came in the paper any harder questions um, yes there's one question particularly almost every single uh, student walking out from the examination hall um, saying about this last question is very, very hard. And, um, you know, they spent like more than 10 minutes on that one, couldn't find out what it is. And uh, we didn't uh, arrive to an answer. So pretty much that question uh, is going to be a deciding of some of the people may categorize this as a very hard uh, paper because of that question. Uh, after talking to several students regarding that question, so we try to understand that question came up as not as a one single topic. The question came with a couple of topics combined together. So exact trick values you need to know. Sector area, a circle area and geometry knowledge you need to have and loads of loads of calculation. You know what is the hard part? You don't have the calculator with you. So without the calculator, you need to do some loads of algebra calculation. That's what it is. Then the next one, we are talking about the grade boundaries for in this video. However, you can see in the screen, um, there are 2018, 2017, 2000 um, November receipt paper, everything's in the screen. So if you are aiming for a A or A star, you are pretty much, you know, 124, 125. And having said that in June 2018 is 139 is the boundary because of the exam is very easy. So now we are not going to be do any premature decision, premature uh, prediction for this grade boundary. We will officially publish a video after the paper two and three completed. Is that make sense? So we will show you the, the hardest question came in today's paper. Uh, before we go to the hardest questions, we are trying to give some kind advice for everyone. Don't worry about the today's exam. Paper one is now over. So focus on the revision for P2 and P3, which is paper two and paper three, trying to revise. And whatever you made some careless mistake, grab the marks from paper two and paper three. Practice more four, five, six marker questions and subscribe to our channel. Participate in live streaming session before the P2 and P3. We are next week, we are going to be arranging throughout the bank holiday weekend. We are doing some streaming session. Please come and participate, which will definitely will help you for your paper two and paper three. And the next one, we are going to show the, the question. Maybe like a, this is the same question or maybe something different. Uh, we will try to show you how to solve this question. So A, B, C are the centers of three circles with radius four centimeters. A, B, C is a straight line. A, B equal B, C equal four centimeter. Find the shaded area. It's a five marks, right? So shaded area, they're talking about the yellow color bit. What is the area? These are the information given. A, B, C um, are the centers of the three circles. Radius is four centimeter and A, B, B, C is four centimeter. So let's look at the working out. So first of all, what we are doing is A, B equal A, D equal B, D because A, B is four centimeter radius. 
AD also radius, BD is the radius of the middle circle. So all the radius are 4 cm, means therefore ABD is an equilateral triangle, which means DAB is 60 degrees. Then when I see the 60 degrees inside the triangle, we can see a sector. You may have studied the sector area is theta over 360, which is 60 over 360 times pi times 4 square. So you simplify 60 over 360 is 1 sixth pi 16. Then you simplify 8 pi over 3 is the sector area. Area of the triangle, you have to use the trigonometric equation half AB sine C. Half times 4 times 4 times sine 60. Sine 60, you need to memorize that value, exact trick value, root 3 over 2. If you simplify that one, you get 4 root 3. Then, area of the segment area, which is the pink color highlighted per, um, part here, and that is, um, you need to take away the sector area, take away the triangle area. So, I have shown here 8 pi over 3 minus 4 root 3 over 1. So, you take the denominator, same 3, then you will get 8 pi minus 12 root 3 over 3. Then what we are going to do is, so the area of the sector is 8 pi over 3, area of the segment is 8 pi minus 12 root 3 over 3. Now if you come back to the object here, we are talking about a shape S. That shape S is made by a sector which is 8 pi over 3 and a segment which is the green color one which is 8 pi minus 12 root 3 over 3, right? So the total area of the shape S, total area of the shape S equal to 8 pi over 3 plus 8 pi minus 12 root 3 over 3. So the bottom denominator is same. So if you add 8 pi with 8 pi is 16 pi minus 12 root 3. Now we are going to be divide this entire question into half of that one. So the semicircle on the top trying to find out one shaded area then we can times it by 2. So in the top half of the circle, shape S has two portion and in between there is a shaded area in yellow stripes. That is the question. So the shaded area equal to area of the semicircle take away two times the S. So let's do that one. So in the next slide, you can see here area of the shape S is 16 pi minus 12 root 3 over 3. Then the shaded area is area of the semicircle minus 2 times s, half times pi times 4 squared minus 2 times that 12 pi minus 12 root 3 over 3. So you simplify 4 squared is 16, 16 divided by 2 is 8 pi over 1 minus 2 times 16 pi minus 12 root 3 over 3. So you can do the common denominator as 3. So that will comes as a 24 pi minus 2 times 16 is minus 32 pi minus time minus is plus 24 root 3. 24 pi take away 32 pi is minus 8 pi. So 24 root 3 minus 8 pi over 3. So that is equal to 8 over 3. I can factorize 8 out. So 3 root 3 minus pi. Now question has two shaded parts, top and bottom. So and they are identical. Therefore final answer is times by 2. So if I times by 2, 2 times 8 is 16 over 3, 3 root 3 minus 5. So this answer is our answer. Maybe the question may be different question. So question may be um, 4 centimeter, maybe a 6 centimeter. We have no knowledge. This is based on the our students. Many people we interviewed and get the feedback. So they describe the question this way. So based on that one, we just design this one and show the working out, right? So that is end of this video session and um, click the notification button. So whenever we go live streaming session or upload a new video, you will be get notified. Thanks for your time and I'll see you soon.